Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Emmanuel Lens back again with another video. So, um, I was shooting my first video on the, um, my very first ever video on the uh, Fujifilm X100V and unfortunately my monitor came, um, ran out of power, my battery, I had to change the battery, so I kind of lo lost my train of thought, so I decided to reshoot the video altogether. So, is this camera any good for video? That's the question that I'm responding to here and I, I, I know that a lot of people have uh, spoken about the camera but especially on the photography side of it but not the video side. This is a very, this is probably one of the best camera for content creator and I'm going to, very, to take a very simplistic uh, approach to this camera uh, especially people that want to shoot very fast and very quickly and deliver out there. If you are used to shooting yourself without a screen, uh, this can be a camera for you, to be honest. You don't really need all the shenanigans that I have happening on my end here to be able to shoot myself. I'm just going to show you quickly the type of setup that I have going on so that I am able to capture the video that I am shooting right now. So generally, this is what I use to shoot my video. It's, it's a Canon... Um, 800D, it's still a very old camera, but I mean, it does the job for me so far. I'm planning to change it to upgrade to a Fuji XS20. So this is what I use. It doesn't even shoot 4K, uh, but I always do upscale all of my video. So this is what the um, Fuji looks like on my uh, sets at the moment. So this is what I am shooting with. I'm just gonna put this on manual. So this is what I am shooting with, as you can see. Uh, this is the set that I have going on right now. So it's a monitor on top of the camera because it doesn't have a flip out screen. And I have a external microphone obviously with a recorder. The advantage that I have with this microphone is that it's also a recorder so I don't really need a cable or anything like that. It doesn't have a microphone input, at least a 3.5 microphone input that this camera has. This That also can be a bumper. Uh, the external flip out screen. It doesn't have a, a screen, but it's only flip up and down. It's not flip out as with my, eight. most of the Canon, for example, actually have a flip out, a flip out screen. And it has a lot of flavors in terms of videos, but you don't necessarily need to shoot all of those flavor. If you just want to use this camera to shoot video and be on the go, for example, you can shoot with any of the Fuji, Fuji simulation. And when you shoot with any of the Fuji, Fuji, Fuji simulation, you are not uh, obliged to shoot at ISO 1000, which is the uh, minimum ISO with the Fuji F-Log2 simulation. And I think it ISO 800, if not 640 with F-Log1. Uh, I do prefer F-Log2, it's what I am using right now. And I'm using a conversion light from uh, Alexa. Ari Alexa conversion light to uh, convert it to Rec 709 and it looks really, really good. At least on the monitor that I am using right now, I think this is probably one of the best video that I am taking this uh, year. And I'm shooting in 6K there, so the format is 6K uh, open gate F-Log. So I'm using the sensor width for which means that I can actually crop this video for any other format uh, or any other medium so it can go vertical or horizontal whichever means that i want so i have a little bit more headroom as well as uh, more headroom let me just say and side room so 6k i can definitely downscale it to 4k very easily but i'm going to post it in, in 6k uh, open gates and uh, yeah you guys do uh, whatever you want with this but yeah uh, YouTube doesn't support 6K, but at least you can see that I am able to shoot this like this. This camera is for content creator as well. I mean, besides being a very good photo camera, it's also a very good video camera. The ISO performance is really, really good. I'm at ISO 1000 at the moment, and I don't think I'm seeing any grain. Obviously, if you give it enough light, and it's really, really good. It might even be too much light, but luckily there is a internal ND filter on this camera, which is also really, really good because you can shoot outside with this camera on a bright sunny day. You might have to change your aperture here and there. I'm shooting, I think, on aperture, uh, I'm on f2.2, so that is good. As I said, uh, some of the bumpers, maybe on the physical 
uh, ergonomic aspect of the video because it is a video more catered for videographer and it doesn't really have that uh, ergonomic it doesn't even look like for example a DSLR it's a very small uh, point and shoot it doesn't have the uh, input microphone input as I already alluded to it and the HDMI is a micro HDMI like you find on the Canon R5 Mark One, <laughs> same one. But I also like the fact that it's still SD card. They haven't uh, put a um, CFX Express uh, card here, which are very very expensive. So I'm using with my SD card, which is affordable, and SD card will still be affordable. It's not even a V90 card, not even a V60 card. I do believe it's a V30 card, and it's 200 megabit per second. And as I haven't have any drop of frame or anything that says the camera can't shoot. It also has a tally light that allows me to be able to know whether I am shooting or not. Uh, granted, I do have an external monitor on the camera, it's, but it's still very good. And autofocus. Fuji autofocus has been very uh, controversial as of late. Obviously, this camera is not like I'm using it on a professional set. Can you use this camera on a professional set? Probably not. I wouldn't advise anybody to use this camera on a pro pro professional set because it's not even an interchangeable, interchangeable camera. Um, so, but uh, how is the autofocus? Maybe we're going to do an autofocus test just to see. This is uh, default autofocus settings on this camera just as I got it. So, it's not on the eye autofocus, but I do believe that it is focusing on my face or it's center uh, autofocus. So I put the center metering to like center average, if not center, but it looks okay. Let's be honest for YouTube. This is very good video and this is very good quality. That is very uh, important because it is sharp. I'm not going to lie. This is very sharp, it's sharper than any of the camera that I have. As I said, this one doesn't even shoot 4K. I can put a product out here and it's going to show properly so can you really use this camera can you trust it for video it looks like you can uh, if you're shooting yourself but the thing is if you're used to having a monitor showing you what you are shooting that could be a problem on the previous video that i was trying to shoot uh, my monitor battery ran out as i said earlier in the video and it kind of threw me off and because i couldn't really see myself yeah i felt a little weird shooting without being able to see myself that's actually, I do believe, is a good exercise. But because of the tally light, I knew that I was still shooting. And I knew that, for example, when the monitor went off, the tally light also went off. It. I knew that the camera stopped shooting. That, I think every manufacturer should put that. I know Canon on the newest release that they have done, they have put that, which is very, very commendable. And I think that's something very important to show people that uh, a company... Manufacturers are listening to what the customer wants. Tell light is something that I think should always be there. People in broadcasting use that all the time. So the recording formats are also something that I can commend on this camera. So I am getting an overheating message here. I need to shoot just, just to show you that this camera also overheat for video. Yes, it does overheat for video. I just got an overheating uh, warning, but the camera is still going on. So that's not too bad. Uh, but I think I do believe that I'm going to I'm going to stop uh, recording in a bit. I did get an overheating message here. So the camera does definitely overheat. It's good to know that the camera does overheat, uh, but I think it does overheat because I've put a monitor on heat and quite a lot of things that just end the, the, my uh, light, as you've seen on the video, is also on heat, on heat, not on heat, on heat. So it's probably just uh, adding a little bit more heat uh, to the camera. But yeah, the camera does overheat and it shows as well. I do believe that with all of the technology that they've put inside this camera, they are bound to overheat. Uh, I had the same issue with the XS20. I believe that's literally the same thing that's happening with this camera as well. So I wanted to talk about the writing format. You have 4K, 10 bits, you have uh, 6 6.2K open gates, which I'm using right now. So, I mean, you, it's a lot of, it's a lot of technology in terms of video for a small camera, which I believe is good. And I wish can, uh, Fuji can actually also keep putting this on the camera that are coming up. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. It could, I think, shoot 8K because this is a 40 megapixel sensor. So hopefully it can shoot 8K, but it's not really like anybody uses 8K a lot nowadays, I'd be said uh, MKHP. So guys, I'll see you in the next video. And um, yeah, this was fun to test. Peace out.